It's the most amazing find! Well, I'm a frippin' Dyson expert, aren't I? Yeah! It's about time we put the V back into Victor. <laughs> Man, you don't see that every day. Oh my God, if ever you wanted the chalk and cheese shot. These days, people into electric flying. God, I hope it's not 2019. I hope I'm wrong there. How in the hell can two identical carpet shampoos be two totally different prices on Amazon? Frippin' hell. Crikey Charlies. Now, where else in the world would you see that? Oops, there you go. That's made in China. It maybe says a lot about these for the fact they are just thrown out here. Be very careful buying anything like this. Anyway, I'll put that back on the rubbish piles. My hands feel clean at least. I didn't see that wear and tear on any of the electric mowers that I see going on. That box is absolutely correct. I want the minions. Before we get rolling, this video is a fairly complicated one. There's a couple of sightings I go off with some products I find in the rubbish piles, and I do a deep dive into some things that I see going on with these products. I do this because these products are not very old and they weren't cheap to buy in store. And I need to be very straightforward because when I'm showing you something online, it needs to be factual and it needs to be bound by truth. It's also important for the audience to understand I've got no secret connections or money coming from any of the companies that I talk about in this video. And there's one product in this video that really needs a close, hard and dedicated video all by itself because it's wrapped around the whole idea of going green and being environmental. Yeah, you might save the planet, but you're certainly not going to save your wallet. Okay, let's do it. It's the curbside cleanup time in my part of the world, and this is actually a very interesting rubbish pile. And I will show you why, because there's a few things here that caught my eye. Okay, I see on the rubbish piles now uh, so many of these sorts of lawnmowers. This is an electric lawnmower. It seems to be the new Scourge going on okay brand name Bosch I think a lot of people get caught out by these and they really are basically useless that one's an electric one you plug in the mains but I'm thinking the battery ones often suffer the same fate I noticed this here a lovely excavator toy just beautiful I know all about this toy because I had one as well and I know where they fail and look at this here the track has gone uh, you pay good coin for these uh, and they're just a made in China thing but the problem is that when look at this it just crumbles that's the problem and once the track's gone your excavator no longer wants to play there's also this here this looks like someone was into sort of like mining equipment in a sense uh, these are cheap as far as I know they're just made in China it's a remote control thing I see the aerial there where my hand is and there's another one a bit further down wow i mean these would be okay as i push along little thing i just bring my knee in here to help me okay wow look at that look at that that is very very nice uh remote controlled it would have been out in the rubbish piles the ones like this at least the tracks because you got wheels at least they didn't fail on you um i'm hoping someone can pick that up as a nice thing but it's what's beside here haha <laughs> that really caught my eye and i'm going to try and do this in a one take wonder it's rare for me not to put an edit into something i'm just going to blabber on here look at this here maybe you recognize this by seeing the base wait till you see when we turn this over making sure there's no redback spiders. Ah, this is actually quite heavy. Ah, oh, oh, look at this. Okay, let it plonk down. Oh yeah. It's a whole railway. It's a base plate for what would have been a lovely model of railway. Looks like it would have been quite extensive there. Even the cocky's flying over looking at this and getting excited. Wow, that's just amazing. I've never seen anything like this put out in the rubbish piles. That's that's an absolute first. Just coming in closer on this, and there's something about this that spooked my attention when I turned it over. That there looks like Tracy Island from Thunderbirds. I hope you can see that there. That's what it's reminding me of. 
I reckon someone's going to see that and pick it up. Mind you, uh, railway stuff is sort of on the, the turn downwards these days, sadly. I did also notice on the ground, I went and picked it up, the remote control. Uh, maybe you recognise the brand there. Well, there's, it's just made in China stuff, but it, it was never really cheap because you're sort of paying for the nice detail and scale. Quite a very, very interesting style of rubbish pile, which showed me stuff that you rarely see on the rubbish piles. It's winter time, it's windy and cold. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do before I leave here. I'm gonna sell this so someone picks it up and reuses it because we like to recycle, don't we? Okay, I know how to sell that because I'm going to grab this and also this, hopefully without redback spideys and set up a little scene on that. So with some careful art direction, like film industry people do, I'm gonna set up a little scene and people will see this and they'll go, wow, look at that. That's amazing. We're going to take this home and we're going to really enjoy this in our backyard. I'll put this at a bit of a better angle of the dangle so it looks more realistic. Okay. Also helps if I get the excavator arm looking like it's actually doing some digging. That's more like it. There we go. How absolutely inviting and tempting is this? I've made a little scene here and I'm sure now someone's going to see this and say, I want that for my backyard. I'm so excited by the little scene that I've made. I've started the play myself. That's how exciting this is. Yeah, that's uh, that's all the fun, and I've just had some some people looking really strange at me. Sorry about that. Okay, well, this looks very very interesting, and what's nice is I'm starting to see I'll call it like normal rubbish piles of lots of variety that I didn't see back in 2020 and 2021 because of the weirdness of the world. Uh, that's a thing that babies learn to walk in, but it's like a a Formula One car or a Daytona car, uh, depending what part of the world you're in. Uh, I've never seen anything like this, oh, it's all muddy here, because we've had lots and lots of rain. Look at that. Okay, so imagine being in there and learning how to walk with something like that. Very, very stylish. Uh, and there's this here, okay, which, <laughs> oh yeah. Wow, uh, I wish I was, a little boy and had something like this, man, I would have just gone ballistic with it. Let me just get it into a bit more of a prime position. Uh, there's a nice side-on view of this vehicle. Uh, it's electric power, but I don't think it's your premium style of electric uh, children's vehicle, excavator, whatever you want to call it. It's got levers here, and I'll just pretend we're driving for a moment, and we'll do the lever actions. That will bring up your arm. It'll actually lock there, and then the other lever here does that with the scoop. It's actually a... Well, once you start playing with this, you don't want to stop playing. It would have been just completely awesome driving around doing that. And of course, you've got your steering. Oh, yeah. And the battery and all that, I think, would have been here, where the red back spiders like to reside, although it looks fairly clean. And I will just take a look underneath because I'm a curious bod and I know you're curious as well. Let me just gently turn it over. Okay, uh, sadly it looks like there's a, a black piece of plastic missing here. It's broken through here. Uh, that would be the electric motor down here. Of course, made in China there. That's, everything's freaking made in China. It's all there apart from it looks like a bit of broken plastic. The battery's missing. Okay, that's obviously is the steering mechanism there. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, there's still value in this. If someone saw this and picked it up, I'll just get it back on its wheels. I'm pretty sure you could have some fun with that. Uh, very impressive. Not often I see one of those on the rubbish piles. I'm having flashbacks of what I was seeing going on the last two years, seeing that mattress there. But it was the cheap-ass vacuum cleaner that caught my eye, which has got all the, the mimickings of a Dyson going on. Uh... Yeah, it's just hammered. Oh, that scared the absolute crap out of me. It was the cable thing because 
Frippin' hell, I need a new heart. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. My God, I gotta... Whew, um, yeah, the electric, electrical cable people have come and cut the cord and it's just returned back in. Uh, <laughs> it would have scared the, the spiders as well. That's what I was coming underneath to look at. Plus, I wanted to take a look at that there if I spin the camera around. Yeah, we see it all the time. The problem is made in China. While I'm underneath here and I'm looking at all the messy web, uh, it could be redback spider. I'm just seeing if I can tease a spider out. I think there's a dead spider down in there. But what is here, oh, it's actually a live spider. It's winter time, so the, the poor little spider's recluse and they hate being poked at like that. I don't think I'm gonna make it come out. I probably just, I probably just nailed the poor thing. But what I do notice is there's a egg sac here. To me, it could be Grey Widow. It's too fluffy. It's too fluffy to be red back. Maybe I'm right or wrong. And there's another one over here. Uh, red backs, to me, have a more of a, uh, I call it like, well, it looks more like a non-fluffy outside. That one there looks a, a little bit too fluffy to me. If I could just get that spider that's alive in there. Of course, that could be part of the secret of working out what's going on, I think. Actually, I think it's gone to another planet. Uh, sorry, little spider. Always put things back as you find them. <coughs> Gently, of course. Without it bouncing back into your face. A very neat and tidy pile of rubbish, which often speaks about the people who put these piles of rubbish out. Now, what is on this area here is what's catching my eye. I can see here, I know what this is. It's an Aldi. Uh, drill sharpener why it's on the rubbish pile looks like it hasn't been used that much maybe you've had one of these and maybe you can tell me what's right and wrong with that okay obviously there's a pair of loppers there a pair of shears okay saxon garden tools uh, feels a bit light uh there's something in a green box we'll come back to but what i really caught my eye and oh man i'm so tired of seeing these it's one of these little steamers we we'll just see, look, even the kookaburras are laughing in the background when they saw this. Okay, see who makes this one. Uh, Smart Living Pro, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think these are the scourge. I've seen so many of these thrown out the rubbish pile. I just think they're absolute trash. I've got zero time for those. And I always say to people, don't entertain yourself with that. And let's take a look in this little box here. See what treasures. Oh, within hoping it's not a spider oh it's a pair of binoculars i don't really know much about that i may just take these along with me to work out more it's actually fairly heavy which i, I don't know does that mean a good thing hmm i'll just go in close on that sign there for you maybe you'll know it there we are and also the optic range of the binoculars the lens caps are in the bottom there. Hmm, that's a curious one. They're fairly heavy and I don't know, I think if something's a bit a bit heavier, isn't it a bit good? Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just gonna take that as a keeper. I'm just walking back to the car with this and I've got a good sign here. It says Japan. That's good. At least it's not China. Oh uh, yes, well this rubbish pile, really the box is what's talking to me and I would be very, very skeptical to how long that's going to be a viable lawnmower and I'm curious what's inside the box because we always want to inspect what's in here, hopefully not giant dangerous spiders. Oh no, it's a lovely tinselly Christmas tree. Look at the tinsel in the sun there. How beautiful is that? And we'll, of course, brought back as we found. It's another rubbish pile, a whoop de doo uh, I've had friends say to me, whenever you see a Black & Decker workmate on the rubbish pile, this is something to keep. Uh, this one looks fairly weather-worn. It's also fairly rusty. Uh, I really think that's well worth to be on the rubbish piles. And look at this here, and there's a bit of a story I've got about office chairs and what happened to office chairs during 2020 and 2021. It was really weird. I never saw one of these put out in the pickup over that period of time. They became the most precious thing in the house uh, for things that I can't discuss on the site. And look what's sitting on there. Of course, it's a beautiful vacuum cleaner and it, 
uh, you know, it's one that you see on the rubbish pile so often without getting into brands or anything. But man, how often do we see those two sorts of items on the rubbish piles? Very, very common. Okay, this is a bit naughty, naughty, naughty. Uh, the rule is if you're dumping white goods like fridges out on the rubbish piles, you're meant to take the doors off because there have been times when people have been trapped inside them um maybe it goes back more to when these sorts of items had latches on them i'll just see if there's a dead body inside no luckily it looks pretty clean but uh the doors should have been taken off that's the rule with white goods like that okay it is a lawnmower it is mains powered electric and these are the things that have become the i'll call it the newish scourge of the rubbish piles this one here, it's a, it's a rubbish brand. It's just a Zito, it's a cheap and nasty one. Eco Mo. I don't think it'd be very economical on your wallet. Let's take a look underneath, how much work has this done? Well, looking under there, it looks like it's done a little bit of work. Often you can tell by looking at the blades, mind you, the blades, or should I say blade, because it's just single, doesn't look too banged up, he wouldn't see. I mean, if you've got a petrol lawnmower, you know how these go. If they've been worked, they get worn out and they get dinged up. Hmm. I can see a bit of mud and stuff in here. Probably redback spiders as well. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't touch these if they were given to me for free. That there's the all-important breed in relation to the electric lawnmower. Uh, made in China, cheap and nasty. Curiously, the electric cable is still on this. I don't know what's going on with people collecting the copper. Normally they're far more efficient. I've just come down to the wealthier part of the suburb, but before I look at some more nice rubbish, I'll just think back to what was going on during 2020 and 2021. And the rubbish piles, as I often say, talk to me. And it was really unusual because as I already mentioned, there were next to no office chairs put out, which is always on the rubbish piles and strangely there was this really really bizarre trend of bedding and when I say bedding I mean lots of bedding it was like just about every house had beds or mattresses put out and I think there was a great big trend to get those mattresses that you buy online I don't know if that makes any sense the ones that come in a box and spring open magically but that was something I noticed and um, the rubbish piles always talk to me. Well, obviously that's uh, a sofa and what looks like the front of a car, back the front, but it was this little car here that, um, yeah, caught my eye. It's a little electric car for children. It's a BMW brand, so you can get baby branding going on very early in their life. It's actually quite nice looking. Uh, I can see there's been some spiderific stuff going on here, okay? Yeah, it's a problem, isn't it? Uh, that's what's inside there, if that makes any sense. I'm surprised that the copper metal merchants haven't got in there because metal prices has been quite high. I'm just looking for red backs and things made in China, of course. Thank you, China. Should I say no, thank you, China. But nevertheless, it would have been a great little electric vehicle. I should shut the door here for a child to play and it's very, very appealing. Okay, some rubbish underneath a real estate sign. Now, prices of homes in the part of town where I live are extremely high against rising interest rates. So my theory is that maybe in a year's time we'll see signs like this all over the suburb as people start to dump their homes because they can't repay the banks. There's a piece of art here, okay? Is it a Monet or is it a piece of rubbish? Hmm. I'm always spooked when I see art on the side of the road because it could be something decent. Uh, it doesn't feel like a Monet. No, I think it's just a piece of uh, rubbish art. Along from the beautiful rubbish art, there is something here that many people may not know what this is. I know what this is, and it's a curious thing to find in the rubbish piles. You put rice in here. Okay, it looks pretty clean. There's a few grains of rice down there, so it has been used. And then down here, it's called a rice box, of course, you get how much you can want to dump out into the tray underneath so you can do this one here 150 grams 300 grams or 450 grams sometimes it'll say cups here and then there's a little thing here to pull out uh, <laughs> my crikey charlies 
the pull out what you want to eat and I wouldn't be eating anything down there from what I can see it looks quite rank but anyway uh, there you go there's my little demonstration of a rice box okay a nice messy mixed bag of rubbish here now what caught my eye initially was this here I thought it was scale electrics track it's actually that Carrera Go uh, which would have been like your your Mario Kart style toys I think were in that I hope I'm right there but look at the, the rust that's set up on this track it'd be a huge clean to get this working again uh, it's a little old box as you can see I can't see any cars here well, if you know, no one's picked this up so I think it's wreck and ruin there is something down the bottom here Oh, it's one of the controllers, maybe, and even that's gone, it's, it's been in the piss. Uh, yeah. Look, just let me do a dig, I'll see if I can find a car. I've done a complete dig, uh, no, that's the power for it. And there was the, the lap counter, but you can see the condition it's in. I really think that's, that's just all rubbish, it'd be very hard to bring that back from the grave. But along from that box of... Uh, what would have been a lot of toy fun. I notice here there is white goods that has been done correctly. The lid's been taken off. That's what you have to do is get rid of the lid. The lid's been set down there and I'm always fearful of what's inside. Well, that's a bit strange. That's that, is that Iron Man? He's all powered up. Well, that is wacky. Look at this. Man, you don't see that every day. It's certainly not on YouTube. Wow. I might just put that in a prominent position for a young child to enjoy. I'm certainly not going to take Iron Man home with me. I'm sort of thinking right on the edge of the door here, which has been thrown out, is a nice place for Iron Man to sit and peruse all that's going on and hopefully someone will see him and take him home and love him. Another pile of rubbish, obviously, but this one's got something very, very curious, very interesting indeed. It's a Dyson and it's one that I've never seen before. It's a DC-03. I'm just gonna grab it here and pretend I'm vacuuming the grass. It's actually not very heavy doing it like this. And this is a very interesting one because to me it looks like a very different design to the other Dysons and I've got many, many I've collected. I've never seen one which has this sort of split system going on. Uh, at the moment, I don't quite understand what's going on there. It's actually called a DC-03 Absolute. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely awesome. It's got a pre-filter, then it's got a post-filter, then it's got the part where it does its separation of doobie, and you can see the doobie doobies in there. Uh, it's just something I've never seen. It's a really curious one, and in my mind, it's quite exciting to me. Quite curious read on the side there, Engineering and Design Awards. And then it goes down to museums. Very interesting indeed. I'm just taking a look at the back of this Dyson. There's the ID area there. Let's read that. Made in Malaysia by Dyson. Of course, Dyson's an English company. And I think it's 2001 with an 01 there. At the moment, the internet's down where I live. I can't check on my phone. If I'm wrong, I will title this area here and tell you the right year. It's still got some of its tools here. Uh, Dyson always did funky things by making little storage areas on the cleaner. And I'm just going to go down and take a look at the brush area because that's going to tell me how much work this has done. Let's take a close look in there. Okay, well that piece there moves and I'm just going to turn the little brush around. You can see that it's done some work. There's lots of hair entangled in there. It actually reminds me of when I was a kid back in the way back in the 70s we had an upright Hoover vacuum cleaner and it had a design very similar to this in fact it was almost identical if ever you wanted a chalk and cheese shot well there it is there on this same pile of rubbish there was one of the I'll just say very very generic style of vacuum cleaners mind you that's a Hoover one a Hero 1600 I bet you it's made in China I guarantee it Hoover ahead of the rest made in China. I'm going to sound like a broken record. How many times have I shown a vacuum cleaner of this style, be it generic or sometimes a brand name on the rubbish piles? Countless times have I paid a dollar for each one. I'm sure I'd be a millionaire. Absolutely sure. 
but it's not very often I find a Dyson. I tell you what, I get excited when I see Dyson, and that DC03 Absolute is going to look stunning in my Dyson collection, which is getting grander and grander every time I find a Dyson. I often say the rubbish piles talk to me. I tell you what, this one's talking to me on two levels of little yapping dogs talking to me as well. There's one of those heaters that you put on your patio. Oh, I just see way too many of them on the rubbish piles, but it's the trend of seeing the battery powered lawnmowers is what's starting to really worry me. Because I live in Australia, this area up here, which is where you control it, is a spider nest. It's Ryobi brand. And just going down and looking at it from the top here, it looks like you slid your battery into this area here. <laughs> And it's a lithium plus 36 volts system. Items like lawn mowers and vacuum cleaners as well will tell you how much work they've done by the scratching and scuffing that you see on the sides. I'm just looking here, I can see some scuffing there, I can see some scratches along here. And looking at the wheels as well, it looks like it's done a little bit of work. But to get a real gauge of how much work this has done, I've got to take a look underneath of the blade area. It's actually quite a hefty device. Let's check out underneath here. This electric mower has got two blades made on one piece of steel. And just by looking at this, it looks like it's been banged up here a bit. But going out on the edge of the blade tells me a bigger story. Normally on petrol mowers, you'll get great big dings and sometimes chunks taken out of here. Uh, it's done a bit of work. Looking at that there. I'll just go around to the other side. It's funny, I've got, I'm paranoid thinking it's going to kick over, but this is electric. It's not going to do what petrol motors do. Yeah, it looks like it's done a bit of work. And just looking at the base plate area here, often that will tell you what's going on. Yeah, it looks pretty much scuffed up and worked. Uh, that's a good sign. There's more of a complete view of underneath. I'm just trying to find some ID on this to try to pick off a year. I might have to do some online research and maybe you can tell me because you're far smarter than me. It's surprisingly heavy. That's the part that's caught me by surprise. Okay, I can see what I want to see. Over. It's over there. If I go, there it is there. Okay, just taking a wider shot there, all the little warnings and stuff that you see on things these days. But what worries me is I hope that's not 2019. God, I hope it's not 2019. I hope I'm wrong there. If it is 2019, for this electric battery powered lawnmower. I think it's died a bit too early. Uh, maybe you know about this brand or had one of these. I do notice, and I'm doing a mini Sherlock Holmes here, it has been, well, there's screws and stuff missing. So someone's tried to pull this apart. In fact, I can get it open here now. Or maybe someone's tried to take an electronic component off. Oh, no, okay, well, maybe that's talking to you. It's not talking to me because I'm not really big on that, but, uh, yeah, if, if that's 2019, that's the problem. I'd like to revisit the blade area on the 2019 Ryobi battery powered lawnmower, and I think it's really important to be fair here. There is a twist in the design of the blade, and it can look like wear and tear depending on where I put the camera. If I get the camera square onto the blade, hopefully we start to see exactly how much metal wear is going on on the cutting side of the blade. I need to be really careful what I show here and be straight up front with what I'm showing. Now it had me curious, can I find one of these lawnmowers still in store? And I'm really wanting to see a brand new one and hopefully do a comparison of the blade area on the new one versus this one which is thrown out. Luckily for me, I go down to my big hardware store, which is a Bunnings, and lo and behold, there's a lawnmower there which looks near identical to the one I found on the rubbish pile. It is marked as 2021. Remembering I'm making this video in 2022, so the date on the lawnmower doesn't mean the date that it starts to be used at. We need to always understand that as well. But looking at this brand new, fresh lawnmower, it really shows us how much work the one that I found on the rubbish piles has done. And sure, it's done a fair bit of work, but it's when I look underneath and I take a look at the nice virgin blade, we start to really see Hopefully the difference between that blade there and the one that I found on the rubbish piles and if I do some fancy edits Maybe we can do a flip-flop of the old blade versus the new blade and hopefully You're seeing that now and hopefully that's telling you a much grander picture of what's going on Mind you, we do not know whether this is the only blade this lawnmower has had And what was nice to see was they actually had 
the replacement blades for this lawnmower and I thought to myself how many people who have these styles of lawnmowers go through multiple sets of blades. Anyway, I think it was really, really important to do a very deep dive here and to be really fair to the Ryobi company and show the one in the rubbish pile versus the one which is brand new in store because I think that really starts to paint a much bigger picture of what's going on here. Remembering the one on the rubbish piles was dated as 2019 and I'm making this video in 2022. I think it's an important thing to insert here and I'll talk about my lawnmower which is an Icta that a little kitten is very interested in. I purchased it back in 2016. I call it an Icta because the V flew off not long after purchasing it. It's a lawnmower that has proven to be easy to start. I've learned a lot about it over the years. It does have its faults but overall how long do I expect this to last? If I squeeze another year or two out of this I'd be very happy considering how much I paid for it. Yeah, That's one way to get rid of the papers! Yew! Back in 2016, I did do a review of this lawnmower, and the lawnmower that the ICTA replaced was a brand called GMC. It's basically a Chinese generic clone of a Honda lawnmower, and it lasted me eight years, and I thought to myself, wow, Considering how much I paid for that GMC, which wasn't very much, and for the fact that it lasted eight years, I thought that was pretty good value. And it's one of these things, how much do you pay for something versus how long you use it for and how much work does it do while you're using it? That's one thing to talk about a product just after you buy it. It's another thing to talk about a product when you've had it for a number of years. Uh, the, get rid of Thomas gently. The starter is starting to get a bit tired. It hasn't failed yet, but it's getting tired. Uh, the throttle cable here, um, these get water in them and then it snapped, but this is now off and, and this is now full throttle when you want to turn it on. So I made it just do that, okay? Of course, the starter cord very early in the days, well, it used to be up there and that was a complete debacle of design. As I said, I like to mulch mow and I can prove that by showing you my mulcher attachment. You can just see how dinged up it is when a rock flies and gets this thing. But mulch mowing... Uh, needs a lot of energy. You go through a lot of blades. I'll get to the blade shortly, but that's the mulcher component there. Uh, the catcher here, it suffered damage during the hailstorm. It normally gets left out in the sun. That's why it's all gone a different color. It used to be blue. And it broke through there. And then there's a spot there where the hail has hit. You can see the star mark that hail does. It was actually up on its end and hail was basically pinging off the back of it but I, luckily I rarely use that mind you when the rubbish piles are out I did find another catcher there they all fit each other with victors which is quite nice okay let me talk about the blades this is a set of blades off the Icta I change them every about two years I did the maths it's actually 2.3 years and as you can see on these blades, and look carefully here, this used to be a straight edge on the front. You can see how it's worn down. Okay, this is the cutting side, and this is, the, in a sense, the flicking side that flicks the grass up into the mower. Uh, all these blades are showing signs of wear. And what happens, I find, is the back of the blade, the flick part, will sometimes break off. You get an imbalance going on, and it's really time to change your blades when you've got pieces of metal flying off them, and that's the fourth blade. But you can see they are... Uh, fairly well worn and worn in a way that you don't see going on on the electric style lawnmowers. I spoke about wheels. The wheels talk to you and how much wear and tear and boogie you do if you lawnmower. Let me show you underneath the base plate here and the blades are relatively new. Okay well this is where all the work gets done and this mower has done a lot of work. I've just installed the mulching area there so it sits in there. Normally the grass would fly up there to the catcher it's very important when you do a blade change, we're getting sidetracked here, but I should point out the really important things to do is have the blades loose. They're designed to move and flick away when they hit something hard so they don't get damaged when you hit hard things. To put up a, uh, a warm blade against one that's a fairly new blade, you can just see the difference in wear and tear there. It, it tells you how much work something doing when you see how much the blades are working. It's one of these items, it's... It's been good, but it's also had its problems. But hey, I've had it for seven years and it's got a few more years left in it yet. 
we had a look at our ICTA because I was curious about how long I've had this product and I had a look at a product review website in relation to the Ryobi RLM 36 series lawn mowers and of course that's very very similar to the one I saw on the rubbish piles and it's extremely interesting reading to see what people say about this product there's the good the bad and the ugly in the reviews related to this product the prices are also disclosed and I'm just going to put them up on screen here and you can pause the video and read these if you want. I'll have a link hopefully in the description somewhere to these reviews. But one common complaint I saw was to buy a second battery for one of these lawnmowers was half the cost of the lawnmower itself. Another thing people were saying was they weren't happy with how long the product lasted. There seemed to be some electrical faults going on as well. And it really all gets back to how much work is this lawnmower doing? What style of grass do you have? And what are your expectations in a product when sometimes you may have bought something which isn't suitable for what you're asking it to do? It's very much do your homework and very, very much buyer beware. As always, I'll put this back to as I found it without getting bitten by uh, deadly Australian spidey. Uh, it's a trend. It's a trend on noticing and the rubbish piles often teach you lessons about things to buy in life and things to avoid okay what looks like a fairly boring pile of rubbish actually has a couple of quite interesting things here and things i've never seen on the rubbish pile in particular are those two items there these are model kits as in balsa kits for model aircraft that use little gasoline engines I see made in the USA here, so these wouldn't have been a cheap item, and it does look like it's all still there. Maybe if you're from the US, you'd understand this brand. Ah, uh, there's two here. There's another one here. That one's all bundled up. Wow, I've never seen that on the rubbish piles. When I was much, much younger, I used to do control line flying, although... I believe these are for remote control flying. They look awesome. What's transformed this hobby is these days people into electric flying and especially with the helicopters as well. And when I look at this, it to me is a bit like a bygone era. Right next to the model plane boogie, I see some power tools. This one here, it's Ryobi brand. It's a planer. It doesn't look like it's done that much work. But one thing I notice is it's not the Australian plug. If I can get it in my hands there. I Is that UK? Okay, electric planner. And let's just take a look at the voltage. Okay, it's 220 to 240 volt. It would actually work in Australia. Of course, never forget made in China. Yeah, it's in a fairly good nick. And there's also a sander here. Okay, again, doesn't look like it's done very much work at all. In fact, it's still got the base plate that you put on. Has that done any sanding? Because normally there's a sanding sheet put on that. Uh, it's Ryobi again. I also notice it's got that plug there, which I've got no idea what that's related to. But let's take a look at uh, the info bit wherever I can find it. Ryobi Orbital Sander, it says 240 VAC. 50 hertz, of course, made in China. It maybe says a lot about these for the fact they are just thrown out here. There's a bit of a sound system thing there, I believe. It looks like a Black & Decker little, is that a little saw thing? Okay, and curiously, there's also some instructions here for a Dyson vacuum cleaner. Very curious pile of rubbish, especially for the fact we find the model plane kits laying here as well. It's a noisy road and it's a rubbish pile, but guess what's on the other side of this? It's a Dyson! My god, it's an amazing one. It's the same one as I've got at home, as in the one we use at home. It's a DC39. It's got its hose. It looks like it's all here. It's got all its little bits and bobs. It's got the whole box on dice. It's flipping amazing. It's the most amazing find. It is there upside downish. Dyson DC39. It's still got its electrical cable. Look at that. I bet you that still pulls back in because it's a Dyson. Look at that. Uh, we can tell how much wear and tear it's done. It, it looks in really good nick. I'm actually semi-surprised why this is out. There's all of its little doodahs. I know how these ones work because, no, because I've got one. 
There we go, that's the dust collection area. Man, they go great for sucking up spideys. I wonder what's gone wrong with this. Now, there was a design problem with this one. I will point out where the choke point is. Let me just go down there. Okay, this is the suction hose into the vacuum cleaner and it's this area here that I found would get choked up. It actually gets quite slim there. And that was really the only problem I found. And quite often, I'd have to come along. It's when you sucked up something a bit too big. If I can get that off, I'd be a lot better off, wouldn't I? Ah! After that scream, I did get it off. It's down there in that flexible part there and it gets quite slim. That's the choke point. That was really the choke point on this. And of course, this goes up to the dust collection area and that's the rubber seal that stops the dust from escaping. Just on the cone area where that does all the dust separation, I can see a bit of spider rooney thing going on because we're in Australia. Our spiders infest everything. And I will just get this back together. I know how it goes back together because, well, I'm a frippin' Dyson expert, aren't I? Okay, I've got that in the spot. I think I just go like that and it's all back together. It's frippin' awesome. And as the sun sets, look at that. That is a complete beauty shot. I diced it on the side of the road and I've saved it from being picked up and sent to the rubbish piles. I've got to save every Dyson. I better put this insert shot in. This is the DC-39 I just picked up off the rubbish piles. And you'll say, oh, you've just taken your vacuum cleaner out in the rubbish piles. Well, no, there's my one there. Ha ha, I didn't do what you thought I did. Ha ha. And believe it or not, this one still works. I've just plugged it in. But listen carefully to the sound, and there's one thing wrong with this, and the problem is in here. Let's turn it off there. And let me open up this here. Okay, it's this filter here. Look at this. This probably hasn't been cleaned since it was purchased, and it's a very easy filter to clean. You just put it under some water, and it will just run all the mud out of it. Look at that. Okay, well, I have got a clean one because, well, hey, I've got mine here, haven't I? Let me get the filter out of mine. Wooshka. I've just been doing some renovating and actually mine needs to clean out as well. Crikey, there's a fair bit of dust there, isn't there? Let me get my, well, it's actually a dirty filter, but it's cleaner than the one that came out of here into the one I just found. Done. I'll turn this one on now and I can hear it sucking and hopefully clean up the mess I just made. There we go. Dusted. Okay, I'll turn that one off because that's the one I've just picked up and we just had a lesson that you need to clean these filters out because it will inhibit the way they do their suction. Uh, Dyson improved their sucking design and the way they do things uh, from this design onwards. This is actually quite an older design now. In fact, I've just put that filter into my machine. It's going to get very confusing. But uh, yeah, this Dyson here, look, it's a, it's a cracker. I really, I really like this style. This is the morning before the rubbish piles get picked up. It's nice and cool. It's really crisp. It's actually lovely. I like winter time in Australia. It's really, really nice. But what is very nice to see, the rubbish piles returning to what I was seeing prior to the weird years of 2020 and 2021 when there were strange lockdowns. And it really spooked people, but it also affected the way people dealt with their rubbish. I'm calling this a great assortment of mixed stuff and at night time you'll see people come along looking for things what's that it's a jigsaw puzzle back of the world okay at least they've got tasmania there tasmania is often left off that's a little island down the bottom of australia yeah it, and it's also amazing what people throw out isn't it uh, would have been something from maybe school very nice indeed always like looking at the artworks but seeing what's on the piles here is back to normal and at night time what you see is a car will park here with the headlights shining along the rubbish pile and you'll see people going through uh, trying to find I've never quite worked out what they're trying to find but they really intently go through everything looking for something valuable and of course I'm never going to do that am I there's a box here, a mechanic box. What's going to be inside this? And you'll see the people, they rattle through things. I usually find red back spiders. Oh, cr <laughs> crikey, Charlie's. Well, they didn't find this, did they? It's a Makita drill. Wow. 
I should discuss the Makita brand. I had a lot of this when I was younger. It was used to be all made in Japan. I guarantee to you, this is not made in Japan. Let's take a look at this here. Okay, there's the problem made in China. I sound like a broken record on that, don't I? Uh, but sometimes being like a broken record is a good thing. Uh, yeah, that wasn't staged either. You're probably thinking that was amazing. Uh, the people who rattle through haven't rattled through properly. I'll put that back for someone to find. But yeah, the rubbish piles are back to normal. People feel like they can have a normal life again. It's actually very, very refreshing to see and I'll continue on walking down the road. What a beautiful sight, the sun's starting to rise and it's never made the rubbish piles look so fantastic. Look at that garden hose gleaming in the morning sun, just beautiful. Ah yes, another beautiful pile of rubbish. And it's really nice to see the office chairs being thrown out again. I was worried when they weren't being thrown out. You know, there's an item that I've never seen on the rubbish piles. I'm pretty sure I've never seen one. It's one of those vacuum cleaners that also shampoos your carpet. And recently, a friend of mine on YouTube called Beanmeister22, he featured one that he purchased and it did a very good job. In fact, we've got an explosion of kittens in our house. And when you have an explosion of kittens, you tend to need to clean your carpets a bit more than usual. So I followed Beanmeister's link thinking, I'm gonna go and buy a Hoover Power Dash Pet Compact Carpet Cleaner. And I noticed that the US price was $119, but it was down to $95. I'm showing you all the things on screen here, hopefully, of what was on offer. And I thought, I can't buy that one because the voltage in the US is different to Australia. The US is 110 volts, Australia is 240. But when I went to Amazon Australia, the exact same item was $550.49. And I just thought, what the f is going on there? It makes no sense. Even with the currency exchange, it makes no sense. How can something that's $95 in one country be a over $500 item in Australia? Now I've shown these pictures to many, many people I know and nobody has explained to me why. It did make me go in store and look at these shampooing vacuum cleaner devices. And in Australia, they're not, they're not cheap. Uh, you can buy an El Cheapo one. There is, I think, one for around about a hundred bucks, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be rubbish. Yeah, buy cheap, buy twice. But wow, uh, nobody has explained the difference in price on Amazon of what is two identical items apart from the voltage. I'd love for someone to explain that one for me. I really would. I'd hate to think that Australia is funding the Bezos rocket to wherever. Uh, that, that's what I thought. I just thought oh, we're just we're just funding his rocket, you know, his rocket program. Wow, you know, please tell me, explain to me that price difference. I need to know. I see an explosion of water bottles there, no pun intended, and I also see something that I often see in the rubbish piles. Remember, I never see vacuum cleaners that shampoo your carpets. It's one of these. So often I see these power devices uh, on the rubbish piles. Let me just work out who made this one and where it's from. So looking at that there, it's actually something from an Aldi shop. Uh, maybe that's all you need to know. And maybe that totally explains why it's on the rubbish pile and we will put it back to where it belongs. Ah, yes, I should say that, shouldn't I? That box is absolutely correct. Oh, I do like looking at the little assortment toys that you see piled up in the rubbish piles. There's a dinosaur in a bucket here. Now, where else in the world would you see that combination? It's also got branding of a bank on it as well. Yeah, so I'll leave that one alone. And I noticed on the road, just next to this, and I love this. Look at this. It's a little setup of a toy, what would you call it? Loader, I'll just call it a loader, and a very oversized dump truck. I mean, that's just bringing tears to my eyes, and I love seeing that little bit of creativity going on. I dare say a child's come along, I thought, let's make a little scene. Looks lovely. I'm about to go past the service station. Let's just very quickly talk about petrol, or should I say gas prices for Americans. 
This is a BP petrol station, BP Rewards, and these prices are ridiculously high. This is price per litre, so $2.22, $2.23, $2.19 for diesel. And ultimate fuel is a ridiculous $2.42 per litre. I do watch the American Today Show. It's broadcast here in Australia in the mornings, and I did see a story saying that gas prices in the US was $5 a gallon. I can't really convert what we see here to what you're paying over there, but I bet you you're better off than what we are. Just down from the servo, well, of course, there's sofas and things out in the rubbish piles. Very, very common item. But look at this here, and I had a bit of a, a thought, well, what goes on here, apart from playing in the dirt and having a whole sack of fun, there's a handle on this. It looks like it made sounds, okay, because there's a battery thing there and a little sound thing. The button's there. It's actually... It's still making it sounds very softly. You'll never hear it. Actually, you better be careful. There could be little friendly spiders here, but maybe it's something you sit on. I don't quite understand this part, but then I thought, who's gonna sit on that? It doesn't look very comfortable. Or is it something you just drag along and that's the way you have your fun? There's been a bit of a theme of things like that in in this one hasn't there this this rubbish pile collection thing i will check for spiders but um yeah i can see there's been activity here but i'm not calling it nasty activity like you would see around in my place and of course in upside down land made in china where else would it be made wake up everyone it's time to give them the shaft down the road a bit more someone running in the distance there notice that i'm not running you never see me run I wonder what's in this box. And uh, I think it's some funky sound system thing. Wow. Okay, whatever that is. Whatever it was, it was fragile and delivered by TNT. What do you think's in the box? I always love seeing what's in here. Crikey, Charlie. <laughs> A pair of toasters. Wow, that's, this one's actually fairly heavy. Just gonna see what brand they are. Okay, Kenwood. Now, as far as I know, Kenwood's a fairly decent brand. I wonder where it's made. Designed and engineered in the UK, blah, blah, blah. But above that, made in China. Maybe you've had one of these Kenwood toasters. It's still got its power lead. The people who collect copper have been very lax and the metal prices have been super high because the world's going... Oops, there you go. That's made in China. That just completely broke off. And I wasn't really mishandling it. Maybe that's why it's in the bin. Sunbeam. I know where this is going to be made. Um, Sunbeams. I'll just call it a cheaper brand. Let's take a quick look at that there. Ah, oh, yes. More made in China syndrome. Boo. I wonder when we're going to give up our reliance on made in China stuff. Uh, electrical cable is still there. Very, very interesting. The people who come and collect copper are often ruthless in the way they get stuff. Let me put this back to how it was before. Along from the box, there's a bag full of electric light bulbs. What do you call a collection of electric light bulbs? Is it called an Edison as a collective noun? And there's also another box of, looks like the heat lamps here. Part of me is itching just to smash that up, but that'd be naughty. And up on this little table here, guess what there is? Just guess. It is a cheap and nasty vacuum cleaner. I'm really spooked for the fact I've never seen one of those shampooing, vacuuming type of devices on the rubbish piles. Maybe they don't break down. Maybe people don't buy them. Maybe they're way too expensive in Australia. Amazon. Uh, before I get into trouble, let's take a look over this one. I like there. Yeah, we're back to our normal. Oh, look at that there. Someone's bought a decent vacuum cleaner. Oh my God, yes. This is the brand of vacuum cleaner I rarely find on the rubbish piles. I'm hoping that this has got something inside it which is nice. Unfortunately, it, if I kick it feels a bit light. So what's inside here? Will it be something fantastic or something just rubbish? No, it's just rubbish. Yeah, so whoever used to own this box obviously have a very nice vacuum cleaner that hopefully won't be seen in the rubbish piles for many years to come and if it is on the rubbish piles hopefully i'll find it just beside the dyson box there's something here that i spoke about earlier on and i'd be very very careful ever purchasing one of these do your homework extremely well it's a battery powered lawnmower this one is battery powered 
and it's out in the rubbish piles. By looking underneath, I can tell you how much work it's done. Well, just looking down the side, looking at these items, you can see they haven't done much work. Okay, maybe it tells me the things don't work at all. Underneath, it looks like that. A bit dodgy cam, wasn't it? Okay, it looks like it's done a bit of work going by that. There's a bit of muck under there. And we'll open it up here and we'll see what wonders lay inside. Well, someone's been throwing, it looks like. There you go, that's what's been happening in the last couple of years. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, the electric motor is there. It's been disconnected here. It's got a baby's toy there. And it would have been like the battery goes in there. Looks like it would have taken two batteries. I'm just trying to find a brand name. Okay, it's on the front here. Okay, it says garden line here, but let me find some more information on the side of this lawnmower. The part I haven't looked at is this other side. Let me just get around. Take a look at this. Okay, taking a read of this, it took two 20 volt batteries. It's a 20 volt system. I can see made in China, and it's just one of those low end things that end up on the rubbish piles. Be very careful buying anything like this. Maybe after touching all the yuckies, I should get some hand sanitizer on my hands. Oh, cool. Now I've got one slimy hand, and the other one's holding the camera. Anyway, I'll put that back on the rubbish piles. My hands feel clean at least. Right next to the non wondrous battery powered lawnmower, there's a red box here. It's a new balance shoe box. Often in boxes like this, you'll find magic. Oh, crikey, it looks like children's toys and things. Okay, something that would have been, I think, from Kmart. Oh, okay, this is more the deal. Okay, uh, a little toy gun. I don't know what that is. I've got no frippin' idea. Some Kinder Surprise toys. I know those. And uh, look at this. A couple of minions. I'm taking the minions. I want the minions. Another pile of rubbish, but there's something here a little bit unusual, and I like unusual mechanical. And it looks like something you really get your fingers minced into. Uh, it's obviously some sort of thing that you turn, but it looks like it doesn't want to play anymore. And it's upside down because there's a hopper here. Spin it around, and it's rusty as well. It's probably full of red backs. Yeah. Okay. So it's whatever that was. Uh, maybe you know what that used to be, but I've got no clue at all. I'm going to finish on something a little bit strange and different and it's something I walk past every day and it's been there for a long, long time and it's on the road at this roundabout and I think it's time it got picked up and we had a nice close look at it and it resides in the area just down there right in the middle of the screen. I'm going to have to be careful here and not get run over by a car and people see me on the road and they start to accelerate, that's the problem with me. And uh, This is the item here. Okay, let's grab this. Oh, crack is it a couple of parts? I've got it. I'll put those car parts up on the post here so we can get some nice pictures of what's going on here. Okay, who knows their die cast toy cars? I was hoping it was going to be a Lightning McQueen. I saw it was red, but I couldn't quite see what the shape was when it was flattened on the road. What is that car there? Let me flick around and get a back angle view of it as well. I can see spiderlings have enjoyed living on this. Being metallic, it would have been nice and warm in the sun. And that's the back view of this very, very rustic, crushed toy diecast car. I will show you a flip side. I was going to leave it, but let me show you the flip side of that. You can see what colour it was. It was a nice gleaming red at one point. I know there'll be someone out there who will identify this and knows their diecast cars. But it was always on the road there. And it always spooked me that... It just never got picked up by the street sweeper, which is usually fairly efficient. Mind you, going by what's left around the roundabout here, I don't think it's very efficient at all. There you go. That's a different way to finish a video. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Please let me put an end stop onto this video. I went back to where I saw the battery powered Ryobi lawnmower and the catcher appears and the catcher looks brand new. So it looks like whoever had that lawnmower never used the catcher. I'm very curious about that lawnmower and I was speaking to a friend who knows his electronics and he's curious about the condition of the electronics in that lawnmower. Maybe it's best for him to take a look at that. He is a person on YouTube, but we're still talking about what we're going to do with this lawnmower. Another very interesting thing was when I looked at the product reviews related to the Ryobi lawnmower, there were some reads there 
that were nothing to do with the product, but it was people just saying, oh, I'm on my soapbox now, it's time to go green, and this is the way of the future. And of course, they've given the product five stars, and in fact, they've just said it was the most amazing product. Well, it's reviews like that that I totally ignore. There's actually part of me is thinking I need to go out and buy one of these and I need to experience the problems myself, especially what happens to these batteries, the lithium batteries, over winter time. There seems to be some issue when they're not being used. And as I was reading in the product reviews, once that battery's gone, bang, there goes half the cost of the lawnmower again just to get another battery. And I think that's totally wrong. And it's always buyer beware, but I tell you what, even more so these days. <laughs>